We're back here talking a bit of fishing and we're answering some of our questions from our viewers and a question I often get is what do I take with me to the beach when I go fishing? So obviously that's a very difficult question because depending on where you are and in the world and what you're fishing for it'll vary but I'm happy to explain to you guys what I will take with me fishing in South Africa uh, specifically currently in KZ and coastline on a normal day's fishing. Um, just the general stuff I take with me to give you guys an idea as to what to pack in your tackle box or what to take with you to the beach when you go fishing. Alright, so um, obviously when I go on a fishing trip, I pack completely different. If I'm going on a trip where I'm fishing for a week long, um, I will take much more stuff with me. I'm talking specifically now just going for a morning session fishing quickly after, or after work or before work and what I would take on me on a normal fishing day when I go down to the beach. To start off with, we've obviously got our tackle box um, and our bait box, which normally we carry on our backs. In some provinces like the Eastern Cape where the beaches are nice and flat, the guys have got the little trolleys with wheels on and they pull these, um, these uh, the tackle boxes and stuff with them so it's easier. For us in case they're in with our soft beaches and steep beaches, unfortunately we've got to carry the stuff in our backs. So the important bit is your, your carry pack or your bag with your gears in and your bait box. With that, I've always got a bucket for washing my hands um, when I'm baiting up. Obviously, your rod and your reel. And I like to take a, a gimbal, we call them, or sand spike with me to plant my rod while I'm busy baiting up. Or if I've got two rods I'm fishing with, I can always put one rod in this, cast it out and keep it in the pipe while I'm fishing with the other. All right, then, inside our bait box, obviously, we've got our bait. Um, I'll have a knife, a scissors, and a chocker hammer in there as well as my bait needle which I use for threading my dingles into my bait. Um, so that will be inside my bait box and obviously a bit of water, especially in summer months when it gets hot like it is now, water is critical. Right, so I think the part which everybody wants to know about is what tackle do we carry with us. Um, I'm talking for myself, everybody's got their own little special things of carrying, but I think in general most anglers doing rock and surf in case they carry something similar when they go to the beach. Right, so let's open this tackle box and see what we've got here. I always carry a spare reel and normally I'll have a spare reel and a spare rod when I go fishing, two rods and two reels, just for in case and also depends on the type of fishing we do that will determine what gear you take with when it comes to rods and reels. So there's my spare reel. So let's get to the nitty gritty stuff. So to start off with, I've got my hook and trace pouches. Now this is stock standard for me, I carry this with me like this all the time so that suits me and the way I set it up works very well for me all right so the first little pouch is my I call it my shark trace pouch but it's actually my non edible pouch that is for my sharks and my rays and stuff like that uh, sand sharks uh, butterfly rays and stuff we catch in case it in so I've always got a lightweight little gray shark trace um, that's for small little sharks we catch a lot of these six seven kilo gray sharks in case it in so I always carry this little bite trace with me. It's a short little bite, a light trace, and that is for the day when those little gray sharks are there. Um, this specific trace I always carry with me. Every now and then you go fishing and those gray sharks are a bit of a menace, and if you haven't got that trace, they'll keep on biting you off, and your big shark traces will be too big for them, obviously. So that's my little gray shark trace. I'll put it at the bottom. Then I like to carry a variety of traces which are fluorocarbon or only. Um, these are my traces for fish like my flat species, diamond rays, uh, honeycomb rays, sandies, brown skates, for when the water is clean and the fish are, are finicky and, they, and they're not feeding that well. So in those conditions you want to fish with a fluorocarbon trace, hide that steel and it just in improves your chances of getting that bite. So I've got a whole bunch of those fluorocarbon traces some medium and some are quite heavy um, all depending on the conditions and the size fish I'm targeting will depend on how thick I go on that nylon trace all right and then obviously I've got a whole bunch of full metal jacket traces they are normally in case that in I only carry two sizes I'll carry one with an 8 hook and one with a 10 hook that's what I fish and that sort of covers all the bases here in case it in. So obviously the one with the tenner hook 
It can be up to 250 pounds steel, depending on what you target. And then the smaller one with the 8 hook, I like to go 100 or 150 pound nylon coated trace. So that's my non edible pouch, full of traces. The last thing I want to do is get to the beach and want to make a, a complicated trace like this on the beach. So I pre make these traces at home. When I get to the beach, is enough. If it's one of those days where there's a lot of fish, I've always got enough traces to cover me for that day. Right, then I've got my little edible pouch. I'm going to put that on top there. Now generally when I fish for edible fish on the beach, I will make that edible trace on the beach because it's, it's very simple. It's just a piece of fluorocarbon with a hook and a swivel. But certain edible traces takes a bit more time to make and those are the ones I'll keep in here with me. So I've got these little scratching traces we call them. That's when we target our smaller species like a bronze bream or chalun or blacktail or smaller fish in the reefs. So these are pre-made because it takes quite a long time to make them and um, get them precise. So they'll be inside here, a whole bunch of them for the days when we target small little fish. If you're fishing competition and it's a very rough day and, and you can't catch anything else, you'll always divert back to these small little traces just to catch a fish at ways and get on the board. Inside my little edible pouch, I carry the two very, very important things as well. Always some plasters. Because believe me you're gonna need them um, every now and then you hook yourself with a hook or you cut yourself with a knife or you step on something so I always carry plasters it's um, I use them at least once a month and then in South Africa or I guess worldwide your fishing license make sure you carry your fishing license with you I keep it in a little pouch it stays dry it's always with me so if I do get asked for it I've got it it's up to date and I won't get into trouble with that all right then my final pouch is just a bunch of hooks so I've got all the different sizes hooks here that I normally use it would mainly be the hooks that I use for my edible fishing so I carry them there and does depending on the day and what we're targeting I'll grab the right size hook quickly make my edible trace and go fish so this little pouch here is full of hooks all different shapes and sizes and that goes with me everywhere I go Right, so let's put this one side. I'll put this here on the sand. Then the next thing I grab is my bundle of leader lines. So I've got my, let's put it down like that. I've got my fluorocarbon, which I use for my, my little leaders and my traces. Um, I love this stuff, I always use it. I've got a lot of confidence in it, so I won't change. That always comes with me. And then I've got a cheaper line, which I just use for my sinker lines. Because obviously you don't want to use expensive fluorocarbon for your sinker trace. So I just use a, this little cheaper line. Um, and that's basically for my, my sinker line when I attach my sinker to my trace. And obviously you've got your different thicknesses or strengths of your fluorocarbon leader. So it, once again, it'll determine where you are um, and what you fish for. I normally just carry stock standard a, a 0 0.60 millimeter, a 0 0.70 millimeter, a 0 0.80 millimeter, and a one mil. Um, that is a stock standard, and that's basically what I fish with. So I've always got that with me. All right, then something else that's very important to carry with us is our braided leader. So I've got two spools of braided leader, a spool with 100 pound and a spool with 200 pound. So I would, every now and then I'd use 150 pound as well, but my stock standard is my 100 pound for my light tackle fishing and my 200 pound braided leader for my heavy tackle fishing for my biggest sharks and rays. So this I always carry with me and you always need that. Right, and then I've got my little sinker pouch. And inside my sinker pouch, I always carry the same stuff, a pair of pliers, with the side cutters on it, which you always need. I've got my, my cotton, to cotton on my bait. And obviously your sinkers, so I've got a, I normally carry a five, six and seven ounce sinkers with me and within the grapnel and the cone. 
This is my general fishing. If I'm going to do a specific fishing where I need one of the others, either the teardrop or the um, plastic grapnel, I'll throw that in the day I go fishing. But stock standard, I carry these two types with me in different weights. Something else I always carry with me is my tape measure. That because obviously we measure our fish, take a photo and put it back. So the tape measure is always worth just to measure a very nice fish and you want to determine what the weight was. So that's always in there. And then the last thing is a little container with swivels. I've got all different shapes and sizes in there. And once again, this is mainly for my edible fishing when I make a quick trace on the beach. So I've got all my different swivels in there and um, I'm ready to make a quick trace. Okay, so we're almost done. I put that little sinker pouch back. Then obviously we're doing a lot of fishing with our, with our dingles. So I've got a whole variety of different shapes and sizes of, of dingles. Um, the soft ones, the hard ones, the floaty ones. So they're always in my box, the, the, the sizes and the shapes that I like using. I always carry a packet of small cable ties. I use these every now and then when I throw a very big bait and I want to pull that, the hook nice and tight against the, the lip of the bait that I'm throwing just to prevent the hook from sliding out. So, or if I'm doing some sliding big baits, I use the cable ties to attach the bait to the hooks. So that's always in there as well. Alright, and then flotation. We use a lot of flotation. So obviously the type of flotation you like to use. I like this hard surfboard foam type of flotation, so I've always got this in my bag. And then the last thing that I always carry with me is a spare jacket. You never know when the weather is going to turn sour. It might be a nice and sunny day like today, and suddenly the weather comes soon, it's ice cold. So I've always got a spare jacket with me. All right, guys, so basically that's how I go fishing. Um, on a normal day's fishing, for all the guys who asked the question, I really hope it helps you and it helps you to decide how you're going to pack your tackle box um, when you're out there. Or I think it's mostly the guys are new in fishing and wanting to know what they should purchase in order to have a full kit when they're going fishing. So I really hope this helps you and um, yeah, good luck with the fishing.